Laurie, I want to uh, pursue this uh, in terms of animal consciousness. Uh, you study uh, cognition in primates in particular. Uh, what kind of comparisons can we make between human consciousness and, uh, and non-human primate consciousness? I mean, it's a big, difficult issue, especially when you mean about their subjective experience. I can't hang out with them without thinking they have a subjective experience. I mean, any of you guys out there who have a pet, I bet you implicitly assume that that dog has a deep and rich subjective experience, right? But we just wouldn't know. Um, it's, it's still a puzzle to ignore the subjective experience question and ask, what are they thinking? Which I think we have better measures to gain some traction on. But, but it's a real puzzle. And I think the more we get to know about animals and the more fascinating things they do, they're not using natural language, but they're making incredibly complicated decisions, incredibly complicated evaluations. They have preferences. They have all the kind of behavioral signatures that we associate with a creature that's having subjective experience. Um, but again, you know, that's my, that's my tripwire, which is going to get tripped up by you know, a really good CGI 2D image on a screen. Right? Uh, my, so. my sense is slightly different. I think that emotion is very important in our attribution of consciousness to other people and, that, and to animals. Uh, you know, computers can compute very complicated things, and that we don't we don't think that's it. It is really the it is the emotional connection that gives us this intuition. So it's an interesting psychological question: what makes us feel that mm -hmm. something is conscious mm -hmm. besides ourselves? And you know, that has a psychology to it. Whether that psychology can sustain a science. Mm -hmm. I'm very skeptical about, and, and the example of the computer is, you know, the robot fooling me by looking emotional, or maybe not fooling me, if it is emotional, you know, that's, you know, that's why I never got quite caught up in that issue. It's one of the, the classic philosophical problems, people call it the problem of other minds. How do you know that anybody has a mind? How do you know who or what? has a mind, and what we're finding is that this problem is just cropping up practically in some ways within the, the science of, of consciousness all the time. How do we know that animals are conscious? How do we know that um, eventually the problem will come up about mm -hmm. computers? And in Nico's work, um, how do we know that people coming out of coma and so in vegetative states and so on? How can we <coughs> diagnose the presence of consciousness in these people? And what we, what we find is people are very are very imaginative and creative, and they find, and you know, th and there are techniques which people are are developing that don't solve the uh, the, the philosophical problem, but they, you know, we find criteria for consciousness that seem to fit with our normal practices of ascribing consciousness to uh, to people in everyday life and elsewhere. I mean, there is a, a beginning to be a a field of um, we might call it the psychology of other minds, which mm -hmm. Danny is alluding to here, just finding the criteria that ordinary people use for ascribing yeah. consciousness. Do an experiment and say, here's a robot, here's a baby, here's this, here's that, show him a movie. And say, is that one conscious? Is that one thinking? Turns out you get different answers, actually. You know, yeah. Consciousness yeah. seems to go with, you know, with, with things like you know, pain and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. emotion, with emotion and so on. And thinking seems to go much more with the sophisticated stuff. Yeah.